one at 6.05 p.m. All, all, all the persons, all the are, persons present. are present. Cat Mr. Katnaw is, is excused. Present, present in person is, person uh, is uh, Dave M. P. Kubishak, Kellogg, and Dean Veneman. Online, we Online, have, have Joseph Joseph Flu, Tom Rayom, and Steve Colt. The first item of first business, item of business is, is Pledge of Allegiance, allegiance and Island Prayer. Island prayer. In lieu of, in lieu of in location. location. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. Amen. Okay, so our next item is due to a temporary vacancy in District 6, discussion whether to appoint a temporary replacement, no problem, and a possible consideration of an appointment for that temporary, to temporarily fill District 6 Alderman vacancy. You should have received an email from me uh, outlining that uh, District 6 would be temporarily vacant. Just kind of wondering what your wishes are, what you want to do that, with the district. We have a vacancy until uh, the end of April, at least. In the, in the past, this is Scott Kellogg. In the past, I think um, the mayor has appointed somebody temporarily no no okay I yeah. I'm just throwing that out yeah. I thought that that was the case so I think by statute correct me if I'm wrong attorney shell that uh, the council can choose to fill that vacancy temporarily um, until that person returns or you could leave it vacant Just kind of want to know what your wishes are. I guess I'll personally say, in my opinion or not, but I guess, uh, Mr. Kubitschak, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, as far as having a vacancy in the council, uh, Ms. Uh, City Attorney Sue Schill, you correct me if I'm wrong, but it's a case where regardless if someone is here or not, we still have eight open seats, or I shouldn't say open seats, but we have eight seats for quorum purposes. So if there is a situation moving into the future, uh, regardless if it's at a next council meeting or if it's at a, a special meeting, that empty seat, the temporarily vacated seat, is uh, counts against our quorum. So if we needed to do a super majority vote and we have another member missing just coincidentally at that time, it would it might impact us on um, on on actually proving necessary legislation is that correct that's correct you know if i'm mr mayor yeah we'll get you in a speaking order and, and i will say uh that uh yeah. at one point in the time the mayor or the, the council members um actually could pick their own person to fill in yep. but that was taken Ms. away and i believe the state that we that was illegal to do so yeah. I could be wrong on that, but have well, to research that back. But uh, one member, if a member couldn't be here because they were sick or whatever it was, um, they could have somebody. Hey, Tom, can you hold on a second? Tom, let me get you in this. Let me get you in the speaking order. So you're next. You'll be next. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry I didn't hear that. Didn't, yeah, no problem. Uh, Mr. Okay. Kubishak, if you want to finish. Uh, I'm good. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Sorry about that, Tom. Now you can go ahead. You're up, Mr. Aom. Go ahead. Sorry, I missed uh, your point of order there. I'm sorry about that. No problem. Go ahead. Uh, I thought I was recognized. I guess I wasn't. But anyway, um, at one time we used to be able to do that. that we filled in for our own, but there was. Uh, I think the state said we couldn't do it anymore. I put wrong in that, but I would say, and I would have to check into. But uh, I guess that uh, 
I can look at a lot of votes in Washington and uh, won't say that there's a lot, but there are a few non-voting members. And that's because of their off for one reason or another. And uh, uh, I just w really wonder if then we should uh, have somebody fill in for them. At least for now, it looks like a short duration of time. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Real. Uh Mr. Pemke. I don't know if you're ready for a motion or not, but if I see Mr. Pollock is here tonight, if he's prepared to sit, I'd like to make a motion to allow him to fill that vacancy. We have a motion by Bemke, seconded by Kubishak. Um, any further discussion? Mr. Mayor, if I may speak. Yes, sir. Go ahead, Mr. Cole. If we're going to fill the vacancy, I'm, I'd be okay with that as well. But I just want to make sure that we have some sort of uh, open notice process so anybody that's in the district that would be interested in filling that seat would have a chance to buy for it. And just so that it's done openly and transparently so that everyone, anyone that's interested in it could put in for it and it's just publicly noticed. Thank you. Mr. Kubischek? Uh, kind of uh, piggyback on what uh, Mr. Colt just mentioned, though, for clarification purposes, this is not an actual vacated seat, correct? This is actually a temporary, uh, and I don't, maybe the proper term wouldn't even be a vacation, a, a temporary um, um, absence, I guess, with with some respect of actually uh, having uh, Mr. Cadenau actually come back to this position. So I, I, I guess it, it, for, it, and, uh, for you, Steve, um, you know, can you clarify that, uh, Sue? So if this is the case where we're just temporarily filling in for the purpose of so that we can continue with business, um, we can do this without trying to advertise for it because it's, it's actually Mr. Cadenau's seat if until uh, further notice but there's someone sitting in temporarily for us to conduct business. Right. It, the, the statute says that if an elder person is temporarily incapacitated because of physical or mental disability, the Common Council may appoint a person to discharge the elder person's duties until the disability is removed. And uh, the information is, you know, is uh, that it, that he may return uh, perhaps for the May meeting, which would mean, you know, that's at least three, three months. So yes, it, it's. Uh, I mean, it, the temporary appointment, though, is for all intents and purposes, has the is discharging the duties of the alderman, and during that time, um, uh, Mr. Katna would would not be discharging the duties. Although, like you said, I mean, it's it's just someone temporarily. Uh, standing in, he still would be the elected official, you know, and, and once he can come back, then um, obviously whoever the person was appointed then ceases to to have any authority or any responsibility. So, and the statute does not provide for and the, the process or, or what you must do in order to appoint someone. Uh, so that's why it's kind of up to you whether you want to uh, appoint someone today, whether you want to hold off, whether you want to, as Mr. Coates suggested, ask the public what they wish to do. Um, but, you know, if, if you ask the public, then you're probably waiting another month to appoint someone. And, um, but, you know, that's up to you how you want to handle that. Thank you. Any, whoops, any further discussion, comment? Uh, no. Mr. No. Zerflu, Mr. Rayom, Mr. Koth? Negative. Okay. Oh, Mr. Benneman. Um, in the event, what happens if for some reason Katna, Mr. Katna can't return? Then do we have to open? up to election at that point well then you right depending on the the timing of of that um you would you could appoint someone then temporarily until 
uh, a, a special election or the next election um, or leave it vacant until the next normal election. It really depends, you know, at what, what point in the year that's determined. Um, but, right, I would say, you know, with, by May, um, it, it really depends on Mr. Katnow. <laughs> um, but, he, you know, I, I guess, uh, you know, it depends on his situation and, and when he would return and if it's determined that he, or if he wishes not to return, so. I just want to point out, though, to make sure everybody knows that it is an excused absence, and we, right. and we did receive a letter for that excuse. Anything further? I'm trying to get used to this new board. Seeing none, the motion is to temporarily appoint Dennis Pollack to sit in the seat for District 6 until we find out future status of Mr. Katna. Seeing no further discussion, please cast your ballots. Um, Mr. Zerflu? Uh, Mr. Aom? No. Uh, Mr. Koth? Um, just on the principle that there was no public notice, I'm going to abstain. It, it was on the agenda. It was a public notice. Just Oh, I see what you mean for the, to fill the vacancy? Yep. Okay. Motion carried. Five A's, one nay, and one abstention. Mr. Pollack? Yep. These are organized. So the clerk needs to swear Mr. Pollock in. Yeah, go ahead if you want. All right, raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Dennis Pollack. I, Dennis Pollack. Having been duly appointed. Having been duly appointed. To serve as. To serve as. Sixth District Alder Person. Sixth District Alder Person. For the City of Wisconsin Rapids. For the City of Wisconsin Rapids. Do hereby solemnly swear. Hereby oh, solemnly swear. Solemnly swear. That I will support. That I will support the Constitution, the Constitution of the United States, of the United States, and of the state, and of the state of Wisconsin, of Wisconsin, and will faithfully, and will faithfully discharge the duties, discharge the duties of said office, of said office to the best of my ability, to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I guess so everybody knows uh, uh, Mr. Ohm, he'll be he'll be on your committee, Public Works. Just let you know. I guess while the clerk's doing that, just those of you that do not know Dennis, he uh, had run for the seat. I, 
I can tell you what I do know. Um, he's also on the county board, I believe, years ago. And Tom could probably correct me. He also sat on council uh, when we had the large size council. Um, so he's got quite a bit of governmental experience. Uh, Mr. Kubishak will give you a crash course on all electronics. <laughs> well, maybe not. <laughs> all right, next item of business is, can you uh, fix the presence? Are you able to, oh, um, since he will be voting? Well, Actually, can you can you click on the green button? There we go. Now you're with us. Hi. Uh, oh, well, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me try. It work? Did I spell it right? One L? Oh, sorry. One second. Okay. How's that? Beautiful. Okay. Technology's caught up with us. <laughs> So our next item of business is reading of the minutes of their previous meeting held on January 19th, 2021. It's attachment one in your packet. What are your wishes? I'll move to approve. Who that? We have a motion by Zerflu. Seconded by Veneman. Any further discussion? Mr. Mayor, I'm not going to question what the minutes are because I think they're printed right. Okay. But, uh, just, to, just to make my uh, notice knowing that I'm uh, still leery of the, of, I think it's number eight of, of the readings of the minutes. Except maybe the standing committees. Why don't we jump in ahead one? I jumped ahead one, I think. What do you think? Are you? I think, I think there was something in the standing minute, minutes, and but I, that one I didn't mark. I marked the uh, of the previous minutes, and I, I marked the one in the standing minutes, previous uh, meeting. I, I think I didn't miss mark one. I just didn't mark one. I should mark two. Of them. I think the dollar sign comes out with the next one. It's the uh, standing committees uh, of the council, and that starts uh, with finance. So I'll let it go for now. Okay. If you I approve with the minutes, I, I don't agree with the minutes. I you know, a couple things I wish we had done different, but I don't I don't agree with or disagree with the minutes. Okay. If there's an error or something or a typo, just let the clerk know. Yep. Thank you. Seeing no further discussions, please cast your ballots. Uh, Mr. Zerflu? Aye. Uh, thank you, Mr. Aon? Aye. Thank you. And Mr. Cole? Aye. Thank you. Motion carried, eight A's, zero nays. Next item is an update from school superintendent Craig Bjorn. 
on school district referenda questions. Superintendent. I good? Oh, there we go. I appreciate the opportunity from Mayor Blazer to carve three hours out of your evening uh, for a presentation regarding the referenda. I realize your time is value. I'm teasing, of course, but um, I'll make every attempt to be uncharacteristically brief. I do know that I like to talk, and every time I present to you guys, I seem to come with some kind of a ill health consequence. One time it was a wisdom tooth extracted. The other time I think I had a broken rib, and I stand here before you in perfect health this evening. So, um, you know, unimpaired, as it were. Uh, anyway, um, I'm not here uh, uh, to, to uh, advocate for or against uh, the referenda question, simply to provide information to the council. And by virtue of that, uh, you know, anybody that's watching and any constituents that may have questions of you, uh, including uh, me or anybody else for that matter, uh, associated with the school district. Our school board unanimously adopted two referenda questions uh, back in January, um, which would uh, allow the opportunity to be uh, placed on the ballot, April 6th ballot. Question one is a $2 million levy override for five years, so total $10 million over five years. Um, and the dollars there, if passed, would be utilized for curriculum and technology purchases. And just as a real quick review, uh, a similar referendum was passed in the district in 2006. Uh, that number was just over a million dollars a year for five years, 1.14 or something along those lines. That was the last time that ref a referendum of, that, of the, that nature, a levy override, was passed in the district and uh, it was utilized for very similar sorts of purchases, curriculum and technology. So what that means is, is both in the form of uh, things we uh, put in student hands and for student use from computers and uh, other sort of interactive uh, technology-based components as well as the standard sort of textbook and workbook and, and paper and pencil sort of things uh, running the gambit. Um, for those of you that are curious, I do have uh, additional details that I'll share uh, at our public meetings. Uh, that are going to be held one tomorrow night, and I'll review um, that as we conclude this evening too. Uh, one tomorrow night at 6 p.m. Uh, at the PAC. Those will be live streamed on our WRPS YouTube channel as well as recorded, so folks can can go to that to get the the complete dog and pony show, as it were, with uh, very specific details about what we're talking about in terms of purchases and so forth. So, question one: levy override, two million dollars a year for five years. Question two is a bond issue question. Uh, which would allow the district, to, if approved, to um, uh, incur $34 million of uh, debt. Uh, we are uniquely positioned as far as uh, timing is concerned with regard to that circumstance as a result of uh, prior very uh, well done financial management to the organization as a result of uh, Dan Wigan, our former uh, director of business services, who has now uh, since retired. His last day was just a few days ago, uh, last Wednesday. Uh, but nonetheless, position the district quite well, uh, financially speaking, to both the fees debt uh, that we had incurred, which is at a cost savings to, um, to uh, taxpayers in the form of uh, uh, interest that we, of course, do not have to pay, uh, in addition to positioning us well to ask a bond issue question and this levy override question, which I'll emphasize would, based on our projections, incur no change to the school tax portion of the levy if both questions were approved. So I'll reiterate that again because it's quite rare that I can stand here before you straight faced and tell you this. If we pass both questions, the $2 million levy override and the $34 million bond issue, there is no projected tax impact on school-based taxes. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, the $34 million bond issue question includes a, a number of projects. The first project uh, is roughly $12 million that will be uh, allocated towards renovating school entrances to make them more secure. For those of you that have visited our schools, you recognize and realize that you need to buzz to get in um, and so forth. And, and if you're going to be in the building, you have to have your ID scanned. And we have uh, a number of safety protocols and enhancements already taken care of uh, in the district as a result of grants that we uh, secured through the Department of Justice and the Office of School Safety. Uh, nonetheless, many of our facilities do not have um, restricted access insofar as the only area you would have access to upon entering is the office. So you would get in, you'd buzz in, you'd enter through a set of doors, and now the only other place you can go would be directly into the office. And in some of our schools, that's a fairly easy modification where you might change the orientation of a couple of sets of doors and maybe add a door to access an office that's contiguous with the entrance. And in other schools, that's uh, uh, more of an undertaking because uh, similar to, uh, for those of you that have been at Washington um, or Grant or Lincoln High School, once you enter, 
you're pretty much in a, a large hall and you'd have to walk through that large hall or down a ways and, and over a bit to get into the school office. So there would also be in some cases um, uh, redoing and renovation of and relocation of offices uh, along with modifications to the entrances so that when you got in the first place that you would have access to would be the school office. Um, that would touch every single one of our buildings in our uh, my presentation coming up uh, tomorrow night with the community. Uh, the more long-winded version will go through kind of the floor plan and the generalized layout as well as the dollar amount attached to each of the facilities of what those modifications look like. Also included in that $34 million is, um, I, I, I gotta double check what my number is, most of the time it was at the top of my head, but now I'm forgetting, about 21 million to renovate uh, Lincoln High School. Uh, a portion of that is of course as the entrance as I just mentioned, but because Lincoln High School is the way it is, that also includes a relocation of the offices because if you're familiar with Lincoln, the offices are a ways back from where the front doors are. So those offices would be brought to the front of the building and positioned if you're facing Lincoln High School to the left hand side of where those doors are now and then that entrance would be um, repositioned. Additionally, there'd be an updated uh, media center slash library um, student resource center as it were that would be on the right hand side as you're facing the building contiguous with our current commons. That uh, concept has more to do with kind of 21st century learning spaces and think more of a student center uh, on a college campus sort of vibe where you have uh, you know, collaborative uh, opportunities, you have uh, that contiguousness with the cafeteria kind of spilling into you know, an area for kids to get together, do group work and collaboration as well as uh, of course the traditional library and media center. And the question would be why are you relocating the library and media center? Um, not only would we get a very nice uh, student resource center, 21st century space out of that move, but the lion's share of what we're uh, talking about doing with regard to that 21 million at Lincoln High School is renovating the science lab classrooms on the second floor. Um, ironically, I was on the radio this morning on WFHR and I was talking to Pam uh, Hilke prior to, to being on the air about the same topic and she mentioned to me, you know, I remember when Lincoln High School was 40 years old, and I'm talking about East, or the, the old Lincoln High School from 1931. She said, I remember when that was 40 years old, and I thought that was an old building, and I kind of chuckled, and I said, yep, and now the new Lincoln High School is 41 years old. It was built in 1979. Um, if you go through Lincoln High School, you're all gonna walk around and agree that that school is in excellent condition. Our buildings and grounds people and maintenance staff have done phenomenal, phenomenal work. And it does not look uh, like a building of 41 years of age because of that and other things, of course, that the district has done over time. But with that said, science and uh, technology courses are not the same as they were in 1979 as they are now in 2021. Those science lab modifications uh, expand the size of the science labs. Right now they're built for uh, uh, roughly 24 students to be in there in, in kind of lab group uh, scenarios. We're going to expand that to 28 students. Typically, we're carrying for science classes. Uh, you know, sometimes you have lower 20s, but uh, in a lot of cases, you have 26, 28, or even 30 kids in those classes. So they would accommodate more kids, and more importantly, they would be updated to 21st century standards with regard to infrastructure. Um, having renovated science classrooms in my former district uh, prior to coming to Rapids, I can adamantly tell you uh, that because of the nature of the materials that are in there. They are a fairly high dollar amount renovation item as far as classrooms are concerned, totaling over $250,000 a classroom. And most of those dollars are incorporated into the science lab table tops and the cabinetry, as well as the infrastructure, gas, electrical, and that sort of thing uh, to renovate those classrooms. When we do that and expand those science classrooms on the second floor of Lincoln High School, as well as create some more um, uh, collaborative spaces up there, just a few corners carved out kind of in the in that square or rectangular hall around those internal science classrooms, it takes up space for the existing media center, thereby uh, causing us to have to move that, uh, uh, relocate that media center, student resource center down towards the front of the building. So that's the Lincoln project. And then a, another piece of that $34 million bond issue would be the, an addition of a gym at Think Academy. Um, for clarity's sake, uh, we did a survey of the community. Many of you probably received the survey. Hopefully you completed it. Um, and uh, Think Academy is actually Rudolph Elementary School. It's a community elementary school and it's called Think Academy because several years ago it was a charter school when the district had developed some charters uh, back a while ago uh, and through that process had changed the name to Think Academy. 
nonetheless, and of course the name stays, uh, you know, as it is now, because that's how people recognize and understand it. It's how it's uh, listed in our, uh, you know, required paperwork with uh, the DPI and other state entities. But nonetheless, Think Academy is in fact Rudolph uh, Elementary, Rudolph Vesper Area Elementary, and it does house about uh, just, just shy of 300 kids. And I'll get more into that topic in just a second. The addition of a gym out at that facility has everything to do with the fact that their current structure has a CAFNA gymnatorium. So it is a, their cafeteria slash gym. It is not even necessarily a full size gym. Um, you know, pretty standard elementary sort of uh, gym where it's a cafeteria as well as a gathering place to do all school sorts of activities. Uh, that presents some issues with regard to programming out there and the addition of the gym would not only be uh, phenomenal for our FIED program and our kids, but also, also uh, excellent for that community, uh, Rudolph Vesper area for um, gym use uh, and, and not having those folks have to travel into town necessarily to use our facilities elsewhere for things like basketball, volleyball, or wrestling, whatever the case may be. So there would be absolutely a community um, uh, feel and in, in, in use of that facility. That estimates is about 4.7 million. One of the pieces of commentary that's out there around why would you add a gym to a school you might close in the future, uh, which is why I emphasize that there's 300 students at Think Academy. Um, we currently are operating seven elementary schools, and of the seven, there is not one that we are concerned about uh, being well below capacity. In fact, most of our elementary schools are just shy of capacity or pretty close to capacity. And uh, uh, into the foreseeable future, uh, we don't anticipate that those kinds of significant swings in student population uh, to, to warrant uh, additional closures of any schools here you know, on the, on the horizon. I think it's quite clear that uh, maybe 20 years out, it's gonna be tough to, to tell you what's going to happen at that time, but any time in the foreseeable future, I would be absolutely dumbfounded if we're closing another elementary school because uh, it's just simply not in the cards. Uh, the final thing that I'll mention is with regard to uh, one of the initial things that I uh, got into was if taxpayers uh, did see fit to pass both of these questions, that there would not be tax impact uh, in the school-based uh, portion of the levy. Uh, in fact, the 9.73 that you see in the graph there, I think it's on the uh, last page on the back, that's kind of cast forward from this year. Uh, in general, that is uh, a high estimate, um, meaning that if we were to um, you know, further pull on some strings and, and engage in, in uh, mechanisms, uh, school finance mechanisms that are advantageous to the organization, we have a great de degree of ability to moderate and mitigate any kind of potential mill rate impact uh, if there is something on the horizon. So what I went ahead and did um, is ran what I would call like a doomsday or a ca uh, catastrophic sort of scenario to identify what could be a major impact, uh, uh, potentially major impact to taxpayers. The scenario that I ran was a $1 million reduction in state aid, $1 million reduction in state aid, and a 2% decrease in equalized property values. And when you do that, uh, even with these passing, the mill rate estimate is driven to just over 10. So from a 9.73 to just over 10. As it stands right now, there's not a human being walking the streets that can tell you what the next biennial budget's gonna be, much less the one after that. But nonetheless, what they're indicating is flat, typically, uh, because of the pandemic and other issues, that it'll be a flat budget uh, for education. We're hoping for a little bit better than that, but if that's what we're dealt, the 9.73 is an estimate based on that flat budget and flat, flat pupil enrollment and, frankly, flat property values. Um, historically now, we've had st uh, stagnated kind of at 5,100 students uh, as far as pupil count is concerned. Property values have been increasing by at least 2%, if not 3, 4, or 5% uh, in recent history. And of course, state aid being flat is probably the safest bet as we head into a new biennium. I share all that with you just to say that uh, the 9.73 estimate is, is a pretty solid estimate. And it's going to likely be right around that benchmark, if not slightly below that, even if both of these questions pass. With that, I'll just mention that once again, I'm presenting to the community, whoever would like to attend or watch live uh, uh, online on our WRPS YouTube channel tomorrow night at 6 p.m. at the PAC. And then there's another session on Tuesday, March 2nd at, uh, at Rams, the middle school auditorium. That's also at 6 p.m. And then lastly, a final opportunity on Tuesday, March 16th, back at the PAC, also at 6 p.m. Those will all be live streamed on the WRPS YouTube channel and then recorded. And with that, I would entertain any questions you might have. Anybody online have any questions? 
Tom, Joe, Steve. All right. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank oh, you. I'm sorry, Mr. Kubishak. I, I was just going to say thank you for coming down. And, and uh, any anytime we have an opportunity for information like this, I appreciate it, Mr. Mayor, of, of you inviting Mr. Bourne down here. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Next item of business is consider a resolution extending the emergency declaration proclamation regarding the COVID-19 pandemic. See attachment two. We have a motion by Kubishak. Seconded by Veneman to approve. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, please cast your ballots. Uh, Mr. Zerflu? Aye. Mr. Aom? Aye. Mr. Koth? Aye. Motion carried. Eight A's and zero nays. Next item is consider for adoption a special ordinance annexing territory to the City of Wisconsin Rapids based upon a petition for direct annexation by unanimous approval for Wisconsin Rapids Public Schools of approximately 4.094 acres for the town of Grand Rap from the town of Grand Rapids, located at an unaddressed parcel on Grove Avenue, east of 16th Street South, town parcel ID 0700640, and to temporarily zone the parcel institutional district I1, see attachment three. And everybody was also emailed the approval or from the state department of administration their findings to be found that it was in the public interest to approve yeah just a minute i just saw that at the very end i didn't get to, i didn't get to read it um that's what it said. Uh, they found it interesting. Yes, that's correct. Uh, they reviewed it and found it to be the in the interest in the public interest. Mayor, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'll make a motion to approve the annexation on Grove Avenue. We have a motion by Bemke, seconded by Kellogg. Any discussion, questions, comments? And that, that's just one half of Grove Avenue, right? Oh, it, it would be. Kyle, the, or the right of way, whatever, it, it, I mean. That, that's correct, it is. It's, uh, not, it's, not, it's not the whole street. Correct, go ahead, Kyle. I was just going to confirm that that is correct. It is uh, it is half the right of way of Grove Avenue. Thank you. Any further questions or comments? And I don't have a problem with that. It's still somewhat of the funding and how we're doing the podcast. Sounds good. Seeing none. Please cast your ballots. Mr. Zerflu. Aye. Thank you, Mr. Aon. Aye. And thank you, and Mr. Koth. Aye. Thank you. That motion carried eight A's, zero nays. Next item is me. Consider the adoption of the action of the Planning Commission meeting held on February 1st, 2021. You have to bear with me a second here while I pull it up. The Planning Commission met at 4 p.m. on February 1st, 2021 within the Council Chambers at City Hall and via remote audio conference. 
A list of attendees are present on, at the clerk's office. The meeting was called to order at 4 p.m. Item was, one was approval of the reports from January 4th and January 19th, 2021 Plan Commission meeting. Motion by Bemke, seconded by Hansen to approve the reports from the January 4th and January 19th, 2021 Plan Commission meeting. That motion carried seven to zero. <clears throat> Item two is plan 21 0036 Lampert Lee and Associates. A request for a certified survey map approval for the creation of two lots located at 4420 Ridgeview Lane, parcel ID 3414540. Motion by Fee, seconded by Hansen, to approve the request for a certified survey map for the creation of two lots located at 4420 Ridgeview Lane. That motion carried 7 0. <clears throat> Item three is plan. 21-0038, Department of Public Works, request for a certified survey map approval for the creation and purchase of two outlot and a dedication of property, property as public road right away located at 2321 Jefferson Street, parcel ID 3400755. Motion by Blazer, seconded by Bemke to approve the request for a certified survey map approval for the creation and purchase of two outlots and the dedication of public uh, dedication of property as public right of way located at 2321 Jefferson Street that motion carried 70 item 4 is plan 21-0032 wood trust bank request for architectural review to perform facade improvements to the building at 181 second street south parcel id 34 08123-3, which falls within the downtown design overlay district. Staff recommended approval of the request, excluding the limitations outlined in condition number two of the staff report pertaining to the prohibition of dark frosted or tinted glass on the first floor elevation. Motion was by Bemke, seconded by Fee, to approve the facade improvements to the building at 181 2nd Street South, subject to the following conditions. One, window frame trims shall match in color to the bronze ACM panels and anodized aluminum frame shall be permitted. Two is minor modifications to the fa facade improvements can be approved by the Community Development Department. That motion carried 7-0. Item five, plan 21-0027, Wisconsin Rapids Public School District. Request to consider a petition for direct annexation by unanimous approval of approximately 4,094 oh, acres from the town of Grand Rapids located at an unaddressed parcel on Grove Avenue, east of 16th Street South, town parcel ID 0700640, and to be temporarily zoned as parcel, parcel, zoned to parcel institutional district I-1. A commission member asked about the future of Grove Avenue of which staff responded. Motion by Bray, seconded by Blazer to accept the request to consider a petition for direct annexation by unanimous approval for, for, of approximately 4.094 acres from the town of Grand Rapids at an unaddressed parcel Town ID 0700640, and to temporarily zone the parcel as Institutional District I-1. That motion carried 7-0. <clears throat> Plan 20-1020, Wisconsin Rapids School District. Site plan review and architectural review to expand the outdoor recreational facilities at 1801 16th Street South, parcel ID 3414751. Motion by Bray, seconded by Burkhart, to approve site plan review and architectural review to expand the outdoor recreational facilities at 1801 16th Street South, subject to the following conditions. One, the site plan review approval shall only apply to those lands within the Wisconsin Rapids, within the city of Wisconsin Rapids. However, if annexed, of adjacent property occurs prior to the construction of improvements, this review approval shall extend to such annexed land as shown. Number two, 
Application or applicable building and storm permits, state and local, shall be obtained. Three, the applicant shall submit an updated landscape plan meeting the total landscape points requirements and properly placing street frontage landscaping to be reviewed and approved by the Community Development Department. Four, is a minimum five foot parking lot setback shall be required from the street front property line. Five, lights for the outdoor recreational facility shall be turned off no later than one hour after an event. Six, any large refuse storage shall be enclosed and constructed of brick or metal pa panels matching the concession and press box buildings. Number seven is a public, or the Department of Public Works shall review and approve the driveway for the parking lot expansion. Eight, minor modifications to the plan shall be permitted to be reviewed and approved by the Community Development Department. That motion carried, 7-0. <clears throat> Number seven is public, or sorry, public hearing and action on plan 210. 39039 Community Development Department, a request for an amendment to Chapter 11, Zoning Code of the, of the City's Municipal Code to define truck stop and place it within the Zoning District. Public hearing opened at 4.28 p.m. Speak, there was no one speaking in favor or against the request, and that public hearing closed at 4.29. Motion by Bemke, seconded by Hansen, to approve the request for the amendment to the Chapter 11 Zoning Code of the City's Municipal Code to define truck stops and place it within zoning districts. That motion carried 7-0. Item 8 is public hearing and action on Plan 21-0040, Community Development Department, a request for an amendment to Chapter 11 Zoning Code of the Municipal Code to define probably to define food pantry and place it within the zoning district. Public hearing opened at 4.32 p.m. No one spoke in favor or against the request. That public hearing closed at 4.33 p.m. Motion by Bemke, seconded by Hansen, to approve the request for the amendment to Chapter 11, Zoning Code of the City's Municipal Code, to define food pantry and place it within the zoning district. That motion carried 7-0. We made it. Item nine is adjournment. Bemke moved, motion to adjourn, followed by a second from Hansen. Motion carried 7 0. That meeting adjourned at 4 34 p.m. I'll make a motion to approve the actions of the Planning Commission. We have a motion by Kubishak, seconded by Kellogg. Any further discussions? Again, just your. Uh, honor, if I may, yeah, Tom Realm, uh, uh, as long as all the site plans and that are met, whatever they want to do is fine. I just uh, uh, still find the question, and it is, uh, the city being involved in the funding of this, what it is. So that's, uh, uh, you know, if the site plan is met and that type of stuff, that, that's one thing, because that's what anybody has to go through. But, uh, I think we have to have a uh, developer's agreement on this all at some point in time to see where what uh, what the deal what the real cost is is what's going to be to the city. Okay, thank you. Um, any further discussions or questions? Seeing none, please cast your ballots. Mr. Zerflu? Aye. Thank you, Mr. Rayom? Aye. Thank you. And Mr. Cole? Aye. Thank you. That motion carried eight A's, zero nays. Next item is consider the adoption and action of standing committees of the Common Council. Uh, the first one is the Finance and Property Committee, committee held, meeting held on February 2nd, 2021. Mr. Cole. Thank you, Your Honor. The uh, 
Property and Finance Committee meeting was called to order by Alderperson Kellogg at uh, 4.38 p.m. Um, I had some computer problems, uh, but uh, Alderperson Kellogg and Alderperson Kubitschek were present. A list of others that attended is on file with the clerk's office. Item number two was to consider a request from Public Works to review a change order request to the aquatic project for a BFD motor controller to be installed on a 68 feet pump. Circulation system for the Lazy River is moved by Kubitschek, seconded by Kellogg to approve the $7,733.69 change order request to the aquatic project for the VFD motor controller to be installed on the 60 HP pump for circulation system for the Lazy River. Motion carried. Item number three was a uh, review and consider proposals to replace the existing 50 ton excavator. It was moved by Kubitschek. Seconded by Kellogg to purchase a new Volvo PC 480EL excavator from Aerian Equipment for a purchase price of up to $417,500 in a grant permission to DPW staff and grant permission to DPW staff to purchase a used ex excavator in lieu of a new unit if it meets expectations of the city and saves the city money. Motion carried. Item number four was auto the bills. Was moved by Kubishak, uh, and seconded by Kubishak, and here as well as should say probably seconded by Kellogg, to approve check number 6866 to 7237. Motion carried. Item number five was set the next meeting date. The next regularly scheduled property and finance committee meeting will be Tuesday, March 2nd, 2021, at 4 30 p.m. Item number six was adjournment. Motion by Kellogg, seconded by Kubishak to adjourn. The motion, or motion carried, and the meeting adjourned at 4:53 p.m. I'll stop if anyone wants to hold anything out. With nothing being held out, I will move for adoption of the minutes. We have a motion by Coles, seconded by Kubishak. Is there any further discussion on the report? Seeing none, please cast your ballots. Mr. Zerflu. Aye. Thank you, Mr. Rayom. Aye. Thank you, and Mr. Cole. Aye. Thank you. That motion carried eight A zero nays. Next item is Public Works Committee held on February 2nd, 2021. Mr. Rayom. Thank you, Your Honor. Public Works Committee met on Tuesday, February 2nd, 2021 via remote video conference. Tom Room and Dean Veneman were present, others attending on file and this call. Item one was to call all meeting to order. Item the meeting was called to order at 6 p.m. Item two was to review the EPW report. The report was uh, reviewed it's on the uh, uh, city's website. Item three is to review concrete and asphalt contracts. Motion by Veneman, seconded by Realm to direct staff to prepare a bid summary to identify the lowest responsible bid subject. Common Council approval, approval of motion carried two to zero. Item four, we reviewed uh, design proposal for one mile creek uh, dam maintenance. Motion by Rayom, seconded by Veneman to approve contract with MSA for design services related to the one mile creek lower dam not to exceed $30,000. Terms cannot be met, staff shall solicit requests for proposals Motion carried two to zero. Item five, discuss design alternatives on Jackson Street relating to reducing the train delays for westbound traffic. The motion was made by Veneman, seconded by Rayom to adjust the project scope to consider alternatives on Jackson Street relating to the reducing train delays for westbound traffic. Motion carried two to zero. Item six was to review the referral list. Uh, the referral list was reviewed. Item seven was to adjourn. There was a motion by uh, Rayom, second of Venom, to adjourn. The motion carried two to zero. The meeting was adjourned at 6.27 p.m. Uh, with that, Your Honor, I move for report, but we do have a couple, uh, I think, items to take up with that. Uh, Joe's still with us? Yes, Mr. Terry's here. Okay. Or, I'm sorry, Mr. Eichstead's here also. I think we got three, three and four. If my memory's right, I'm gonna take action on. 
So I can I could run through the information real quick for item number three, which was review the concrete and asphalt contracts in the bid opening, which occurred today. Um, at noon today, we open the bids for the asphalt pavement contract. American Asphalt was the sole bidder. With a bid amount of three hundred sixty-one thousand seven hundred fifty-four dollars and sixty-six cents, um, our engineer's estimate was three hundred eighty-six thousand four hundred sixty-nine dollars and seventy-five cents. Um, so it's not atypical for American Asphalt to be the sole bidder, um, and, and given that their their numbers are reasonable uh, compared to previous years in our current estimate. I would recommend awarding the 2021 asphalt paving contract to American Asphalt. With that, with that I made a motion to accept the approval and probably to cut these two items out, um, uh, act on them individually. But I, uh, but, uh, 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 I don't know. But I didn't. Uh, what's that? We're thinking that you probably should hold those items out. Okay. For that item. Okay. With, okay. With that, I'd move. With the exceptions of item three and four, I would hold them to it. Those uh, I'd move for the exception of all of that. Unless somebody else has some other item to hold out. Okay. I'm sorry. Which ones are being held out? We're, we're holding out items three and four on the public works oh. minutes. And you said there was a motion on the balance of the report? So we have a motion and a second to adopt the balance of that report. Is there any further discussion on that? Seeing none, please cast your ballots. Uh, Mr. Zerflu? Aye. Thank you, and Mr. Rayom? Aye. Thank you, and Mr. Cole? Aye. Thank you. That motion carried eight A's, zero nays. I guess the first item would be item three, which is review the concrete and asphalt contracts, which Mr. Ike said just did. So I'd entertain them, probably a motion. Oh, it's, I move that we accept the bid from American Asphalt. That's all. And I don't have the number right in front of me. 367 or something, Joe, I think it was. Yeah. $361,754.66. Yeah. We have a motion by Rayom, second by Kellogg, and Mr. Bemke has a question. Mr. Reich, did a, uh, or... Mr. Terry, whoever is there, this is just for the asphalt, not the concrete, correct? Correct. That's correct. This is just asphalt. I, I also have numbers for the concrete one, and I could summarize those at, at any point here. Thank you. So we'll, we'll handle the asphalt one first. Yeah, it, we can have multiple motions. That works. Yeah. All right, seeing no further discussion, please cast your ballots to approve the asphalt contract. Uh, Mr. Zerflu? Aye. Uh, thank you, Mr. Riom? Aye. Thank you, and Mr. Cole? Aye. Thank you. And that motion carried eight A's, zero nays, um, and the concrete contracts or bids. We opened those bids at 12.30 today. Uh, there were three bids that we opened, uh, one from Chippewa Concrete in the amount of $440,581.18, one from Summers Construction, $440,273, and the apparent low bid uh, from SD Allen Becker for $406,000. $88.25. Uh, there are two other plan holders with no bid, through other construction and Milan contractors. And then there was 
uh, one from Pember Companies, uh, one bid that uh, we were not able to open uh, due to qualification issues. The, so the apparent low bid, low qualified bidder for the 2021 concrete contract uh, is S.D. Becker at $406,088.25 and um, would recommend uh, approval of that contractor. I'll make a motion to approve the lowest qualified or um, a responsible bidder, but then I, after the motion, I got a quick question for Mr. Eichstead. We have a motion by Kubishak, seconded by Kellogg to approve SD Ellenbecker for $406,088.25. Mr. Kubishak. Mr. Eichstead, without going into great detail, what does, um, uh, what are the qualities qualifications needed to be here and again without specifically referring to a specific company what what qualifies or what doesn't qualify a, a, a plan holder to submit a bid so so primarily things that um, that we would want to review from a, a contractor bidder standpoint uh, prior to opening bids is to make sure that the uh, the company doesn't have um, they're not debarred or on, on the DOT's um, debarment list. Um, that's that's one item that we review. Uh, other other items are specific to local experience that we have directly with the company, and any open contracts or liens that are or potential claims that are still pending uh, with with the company or um, in relationship to the contract. So. Uh, there's a variety of other qualifications or things that may uh, come into play, such as professionalism, um, completing work, um, those sorts of things. Thank you. Any further questions or discussion? Seeing none, please cast your ballot. Uh, Mr. Zerflu? Aye. Thank you. And Mr. Ayo? Aye. Thank you. And Mr. Cove? Aye. Thank you. And that motion carried. Eight A's, zero nays. Next item is Human Resource Committee that met on February 4th, 2021. Yeah. Mr. Kubishak. Oh. Oh. oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. We've got number four reviews yeah. design proposals for the One Mile Creek Dam maintenance. I can, I can run through a quick summary on that. I'll, I'll keep it brief. I did submit a memo to the older persons um, for review of this item, give more thorough background on it. Um, in a nutshell, uh, we reached back out to MSA to um, uh, notify them of the committee's wishes uh, regarding the, the, the proposal amount and some of the concerns that we had with that to potentially negotiate we did not receive any um, correspondence back from MSA, so we proceeded with two engineering firms, uh, Cooper Engineering and GEI, to see if we could obtain proposals uh, from them. Uh, Cooper Engineering did not provide uh, any correspondence back. We did have an extensive discussion with the GEI and their staff in conjunction with the DNR. and. Um, Ultimately, GEI declined the opportunity to submit a proposal, uh, primarily because they, they stated that they would not, they could not effectively compete with the price that MSA had provided. Um, should note that uh, there are a limited number of qualified firms uh, that would take up a project like this and um, that have experience working on dams. And we, we reached out to the two that we were aware of other than as an MSA. Um, so give, given the lack of interest from these other qualified firms, I uh, recommend that the city reconsider MSA's proposal of 45000 for the lower dam repair and upper dam removal.
Council, what are your wishes? Joel, just to refresh my memory, is that what we were all asked for? Yeah, so so their their original proposal um, included thirty five thousand for the lower dam repair, ten thousand for the upper dam repair. Um, so for a total of forty five thousand, they also included additional uh, dollars in there, fifteen thousand for dredging related activities. But those are activities that the engineer engineering department will take care of. I'll make a motion to approve what Mr. Reich said, uh, the request that mm -hmm. Mr. Reich said. So we have a motion by Zerflu, Zerflu to approve MSA for $45,000 for the lower dam repair and the upper dam removal. I'll second that. I think we got the money going in the stormwater fund. Sorry, Mr. Veneman beat you to the second, um, but uh, Mr. Eichstead? Yeah, so there's 307,000, I believe, that's budgeted for this project, and um, you know, it should be part of the, the project cost estimate to uh, carry that $45,000 cost. Any further questions or discussion? Seeing none, please cast your ballots. Uh, Mr. Zerflu. Aye. Thank you. And Mr. Rayo? Aye. Thank you. And Mr. Cole? Aye. Thank you. That motion carried, eight days, zero nays. Now on to the Human Resource Committee held on February 4, 2021. Mr. Kubitschek. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A meeting of the Human Resources Committee was held on Thursday, February 4, 2021 at 4 p.m. via remote video conferencing originating from the City Hall Council Chambers. Members present were uh, Kubitschek and Bemke. Um, uh, everybody else uh, is on file with the clerk's office. Item number one, call to order. Chairperson Kubitschek called the meeting to order at 4.03 p.m. Item number two, discuss and consider for approval an updated agreement from Ascension for recurring services rendered by the on-site licensed athletic trainer. Motion by Kubitschek, second by Bemke to approve an, an, updated, an updated agreement from Ascension for recurring services rendered by on-site licensed athletic tra uh, trainer. Motion carried two to zero. Item number three, discuss and consider for approval two lead positions within the aquatics facility, lead concessions and lead uh, admissions. Uh, motion by Kubitschek, second by Bemke, was uh, to approve two lead positions within the aquatics facility, lead concessions, lead uh, admissions with job description, position descriptions and compensation as presented. Motion carried two to zero. Item number four, HR department update on uh, RFP for wage study was reported. Um, uh, also posted positions within uh, the Department of Public Works. And then uh, HR manager talked about looking into changes to the FSA providers. Item number five, adjournment. Motion by Kubitschek, second by Bemke uh, to adjourn. Motion carried two to zero and the meeting adjourned at 4.13 p.m. I'll make a motion for approval. Thank you, Mr. Kubitschek. We have a motion and a seconded by Mr. Kellogg. Any further questions or discussion? Seeing none, please cast your ballots. Uh, Mr. Zerflu? Aye. Thank you. And Mr. Rayo? Aye. Thank you. And Mr. Cohen? 
Hi. Thank you. Did you break it? There you go. That motion carried eight A's, zero nays. Item 11, reports of other committees, commission, boards, and departmental reports. What are your wishes? I'll make motion to have these filed in the clerk's office. Thank you. A motion by Kubishak. Seconded by Bemke. Is there any discussions or questions on any of them? Were these just put on file? Yes, sir. I did just uh, a comment again with water and light. It's, uh, just uh, if it's an in-kind donation in that, I just uh, I question if that's the uh, right thing for the city taxpayers to be uh, be doing. Again, the project is very worthwhile, uh, possibly, but I think with that, I, but I also think there's a lot of a lot of questions to be answered by by the groups involved, and that, I guess not necessarily us, but uh, other than upfront money that we're putting in too, but other people are. But uh, hopefully they they are answering all the questions of uh, uh, you know who gets first pick on a field, who gets how much the, they're going to be charging, and all that type of stuff. And uh, so, but uh, I just have a concern of the. Uh, uh, from the city, uh, city's representative of the city's tax money, uh, tax money uh, being put into something like this, and uh, you know, I guess hopefully if, um, if it ever happens again, that I guess people remember what they did because it's if that's what it is, it's a lot of city money that could be, uh, in a sense, be used for other things. So it, you know, may not work out that way, but uh, we'll see, and um, like I said, it's, it's probably a very good project for the community and that, but uh, for the city to be donating the money to uh, outside groups like that, I just uh, have a hard time agreeing with that, so well, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ayom. Any further questions or comments? Seeing none, please cast your ballots. I vote in favor with the uh, comments that I made. Thank you. Mr. Zerf Zerflu? Aye. And Mr. Aon was an aye. And Mr. Kolf? Aye. Thank you. Uh, motion carried, eight A's, zero nays. Item 12 is referrals to committees. Does the clerk have any? Uh, the council members have any referrals? All right, so we're on to item number 13. I make a motion for adjournment. Adjournment. We have a motion by Kubishak. Second. Second by Rayom. Um, let's do it just by a voice vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. aye. Thank you. Anybody opposed? All right. Motion carried. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night.